Hi guys, how's it going? I'm Dr. Rahman. I have almost like 10 years experience in um, electrical engineering in both academia and industry. Uh, that's why I would like to share my industrial experience with some theoretical concepts in this field. Um, I'm working right now in aerospace. Um, so there are a lot of challenges uh, involved in an industrial uh, designing. So I would like to share those things as well. Today, I really wanted to talk about some of the power design concepts um, and some important things uh, related. Let's start from right now. Right, right. So what I'm gonna do today is basically some of the basic and key ideas involve uh, power design, particularly DC-DC converter. So I, I would like to talk about like DC-DC uh, converters. Um, what is a DC-DC converter um, typically? I showed these things over here, some of the pictures you can see. Um, it's basically what you have, this is a block diagram. So which consists of oscillator, we call it local oscillator, a transformer, and a kind of combination of like a rectifier and like a filter. I would assume that you already know some of the basic things like an oscillator, rectifier, and like a filter sort of thing. So what we do, you send a DC input voltage to the local oscillator. Typically what it does, it it mixes it up with a, with some sort of frequency. It's a local frequency and create a like a square wave. Typically the frequency range is like 10 to 10 kilohertz, meaning 10 hertz to 10 kilohertz, that's fine. And you have that square wave and coming through a transformer. And I, I actually wrote some key points that can, you know, you can also take a look at it. That transformer is Usually, it has some uh, structural uh, requirement. First of all, it should have like toroidal core that can create like really enhanced uh, magnetic field and can create some secondary uh, field or voltage into that one. And it also has hysteresis loop. That loop can control your you know power sequencing and those kind of things. So that the main purpose of the transformer it's like it creates secondary voltage that you need to the other side and there's a ratio like your your you you definitely know that it's a very basic thing the coil has a primary and secondary coil loop so if you change the turn-in ratio you can actually step up or step down meaning you can increase the voltage on the other side or decrease the voltage based on the uh, ratio and the turning. And then you have the same square wave, but whenever you push it through that block, which has rectifier and a filter, that will actually smooth it out your voltage into like more like a square wave. And then the filter will smooth it out to a DC voltage. So in other words, you send the DC voltage to the input side, after all these processes, you will have, or you receive an output voltage, which is a DC. But the interesting thing is, after all these steps, you actually enhance your input voltage at the output, or you can decrease it to the output side. So this is the main uh, purpose for a DC DC converter. That's fine. But the challenge is here, this is a very inefficient. It only can change your voltage level to high and low, but it cannot regulate your voltages. Meaning if you have noises into that one, it's not gonna filter it out. So all these noises get into that um, final stage. And when you are putting the whole thing, the voltage has noises. So it's extremely, inefficient, particularly in regulating the voltage. Okay, so 
people will think about like, well, how can I make it better? More regulation and like noise suppression. Then they use the same DC DC converter, but they, they are coming up with a concept. It's called switching mode or switch mode. Let's talk about those things. It's actually, it has acronyms. It's called SMPS. You can, you can see it clearly here. This is actually switch mode power supply. Okay. What's the main difference between the typical DC DC converter and a switch mode power supply? The main difference is here you have a block diagram close to the input voltage. We call it PW1. It's called pulse width modulator. This is doing pulse width modulation. So you know that you can change the duty cycle of a particular uh, frequency spectrum. Ac actually, you can uh, enhance the, your uh, efficiency high and low this way. So most of the things we do is a uh, controlling your on and off time of the transistor. You should have a transistor inside. Sometimes what happens is a built-in or you can have it as an external, okay? Those transistors can be turned on and off. When it's on, it's actually, you know, driving the whole system through that. When it's off, it shut it off. So this is called switching. So when you, when it's turned on, it's actually dissipate more energy, right? Because the transistor is working on, but when you turn off, it's actually no power dissipation, right? So you have to control how fast or how slow you want it to operate the transistor, right? So you can change the PWM switching frequency, okay? So when you do that, that's the interesting part. You don't have it like in a typical DC DC converter, okay? So when you do that, then you have another step. Uh, you, you can see it, um, actually it's a diode, but it's an ideal diode. So no more reverse or uh, voltage backdrop. Through that, it goes to the inductor, okay? Inductor actually acting as a source, like it's creating current preserving its magnetic field, right? I'm not gonna get into like a detail. We can talk about it in the ne next lecture, I guess. So this is like a source and it continuing delivering your current to the load. That means your output, whatever the resistor you're gonna choose, okay? Now, after that, you see there's a voltage divider, right? We call it feedback. So you already know, I'm pretty sure, um, if you took the power design classes or some sort of, you know, familiarity, when you have a feedback, that will give you what sort of output voltage you want, right? 3.3, 5 volt, whatever. This is one of the reasons. Second reason is that feedback will drive your noise or unwanted signal back to the converter. Okay, so it kind of compensating your noises. There's a term, we're not gonna use it right now, but I can definitely tell you, this is called loop compensation. So you can actually compensate your feedback loop, right? Meaning you can actually remove your unwanted signal through that loop. Okay, now, you can ask me like, okay, that's fine. Where is that noise going through the feedback? Now, if you can take a look at that, this kind of schematic that I drew, there's a op amp, like an operation amplifier, but we call it air amplifier, right? So meaning whenever you have unwanted noise, like an extra, right, voltage that you really don't want, and there's another part of that operation amplifier that's called reference voltage. So whenever you have a reference voltage and you have an unwanted voltage, it's been subtracted or like take a differential through that and send it back to your PW1, right? That's why that type of amplifier we call error amplifier. So error amplifier be connected 
to the feedback. So all these noises keep being feedbacked, compensated to the PWM and get back to the output again through the whole processes. Okay. So this is a very efficient because you have a lot of control. You can control the PWM switching, like a switching frequency. You can make it faster. You can make it slower, right? And then you can choose the inductor so that it can deliver the right amount of current to the system, okay? Also smoothing out all the noises, okay? You have a feedback loop, right? That could take the whole thing through your air amplifier. So it can minimize a lot of unwanted signal, okay? So that's why it's a very, very efficient design of a converter. This is a DC-DC converter, right? Okay. Now, when I talk about, I already mentioned like a switching frequency of the PWM. So either you can make it faster or you can make it slower. But there's a trade-off. When you try to make it faster, like a really high switching frequency, you can actually limit your passive components into DC-DC converter. So you can use minimal amount of resistor, capacitor, all sort of thing. But the problem is when you try to do it fast, it will consume a lot of energy, meaning a lot of power dissipation. Because you have to estimate a power budget, right? If it's too much, it's going to melt your PCB or the design, whatever you're, you're trying to do, right? But when you make it slower, the problem is you need more passive components, probably more cap capacitor, more inductor, or like some complex topology, those kind of things. But on the other hand, you can reduce your power dissipation. So it depends on your requirement of the system or design that you wanted to try. That will tell you what sort of frequency you need. So sometimes we try to choose like optimum values, like in the middle of somewhere, like your high frequency and a low frequency so that you can take the dissipation and also the smaller, simple, optimized design. So thank you guys. I really appreciate it. If you like this uh, lecture, please subscribe my channel and stay tuned. We're going to talk about in the next lecture, the topology of the different DC DC converter. Like I'm going to talk about in detail with the design parameters about buck converter, boost, and a buck boost. Thank you guys. I really appreciate it.